Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Thank you for joining us. So we all know that Donald Trump won the presidency last year, and there's been a lot of conversation as to why and how that happened. Um, from a number of perspectives, specifically from the Democratic Party or people attacking the Democratic Party, uh, some of those issues were, okay, it was Hillary versus Bernie and the people who disagreed about what happened there and, and, and whose side you should take. Um, and then it was emails and the FBI and how that came to play, especially when FBI Director Comey, 11 days before the election, released a statement that there were, gonna be, that there were more emails, even though they were actually copies of previous emails. Um, and then recently there have been discussions that have come up about DNC spending. And an important note there is the amount of money, and let's focus on three states in particular, the three states we always talk about, uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. It's important to recognize that last year, the DNC spent a tenth in those states as they had the previous two presidential election cycles. That's interesting, and that's an important point to note. And there's perhaps several reasons for that, arrogance maybe being one of them. Um, but we're going to discuss that a little bit. Other issues, and bigger picture issues, have to do with, okay, the Democratic Party and what they've been doing over the past two generations. And part of that conversation is the, a transition that has happened from our original popular perspective of the Democratic Party coming back for, you know, from, from the 50s and 60s and, and 70s even, and as it began to transition from the economic reform policies, making sure that we're taking care of our people, making sure that we're getting more jobs and we're, we, we're getting more benefits available for people, getting higher wages, cr helping the American dream happen in all these ways. This was the popular economic reform. And as a result of that, we were also able to get social justice reform, civil rights and so forth. Well, a transition happened. And that transition had us more, as a party, focus a bit more on the social justice issues than on the economic reform. So we kind of let those go. And that was highlighted last, in last year's election because that's one of the big things Donald Trump was talking about. It's one of the big things Bernie was talking about. And then Hillary would talk about it as a result of that. So that was a big piece of it. And I think that is one of the core issues. So. Within that, and as you look back, and we won't go through all this now, but as we look back uh, over the past couple of generations, you realize that parties have an evolution in how they change and how they become what they are today versus 10 years ago, 30 years ago. So to help us discuss this a little bit further, um, I have a guest today I'm very thrilled to, uh, to have uh, join us. His name is Raphael Leonard. Uh, he is relatively new to me, anyway, as far as the Democratic Party is concerned. He was brought in, I think, with a wave of Bernie supporters, which we welcome that we need that conversation. Uh, so please join me in welcoming Raphael Leonard. Aloha. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you. And I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, I hope to have a good conversation. So first, before we jump into all of that stuff I just sort of threw out there, um, Tell us about yourself. How, how long have you been involved in politics and, and what got you where you are today? Um, I would say peripherally involved in politics. I grew up in a democratic family, uh, grew up in a hippie family. Um, uh, but then as I was growing up, I was not necessarily overly involved in the democratic party in terms of the actual structure and how it functions. Um, and I began to learn a little bit about that with uh, Barack Obama when he ran and I sort of got a hint of what was going on in there. And then uh, this previous presidential preference poll, which is what the caucus is called in Hawaii, right. was the first time that I actually voted in a presidential primary style um, voting event. And there were a lot of different things going on in one room with very little people to help out, <laughs> yes. uh, to put it politely. <laughs> yes. and, and I now communicate regularly with all of those people who were helping out. So. Um, I, I was vaguely aware of what a precinct was, and I ended up becoming a precinct president of the Democratic Party within Hawaii. So that is an elected position to the private party in Hawaii. Um, and from there, it just sort of snowballed. I began to get an inside look for what was and was not happening with inside the party. Right. Um, and it gave me a stronger understanding of the confusion that was happening amongst the general 
public of the Democratic Party on the national level. Sure, and that also can help you begin to have that insight on, on how we can fix a few things. Yes, absolutely. Uh, from the inside, because that was, yeah. I think, you know, when we first started to communicate a few months ago, it was all about, well, okay, great. Everybody <laughs> wants change. What does that change look like? Yeah. Let's take a look at the rules. Let's take a look at what the governing documents are, what needs to be changed, and let's make those changes. Yeah. And that's, that's really where we're at now, right? Because we're, we're, we have a convention coming up, and we're yeah. trying to figure out, okay, what do we do, and how do we go from there? Yeah. So, okay, um, so like, like many people, you were sort of peripherally involved in politics. You kind of listened, but like many people inspired by former President Barack Obama, and you started to pay attention more. And then as you began to get more involved with it, then here comes Bernie. So you were you were a Bernie supporter. I don't want to put you on the spot there. You can, <laughs> however you want to say that. I believe you were a Bernie supporter. Many of us were. Yep. Uh, many of us are also Hillary supporters. The, uh, there was a conflict there. But yeah. tell us about uh, what, what was it about Bernie's point of view that, that brought you in to get you more engaged? Um, it wasn't, in my mind, it wasn't quite so developed at the time, but it was really addressing a lot of the issues that affect a lot of us on a day-to-day -day basis, but that are kind of a little touchy to talk about sometimes. Like, it's, it's a little uncomfortable to talk about the fact that, like, maybe my health care isn't working for me, or maybe uh, I just yesterday was met with someone who um, was trying to take care of her grandmother, and because she wasn't able to get uh, family leave for a grandmother under certain definitions and all the paperwork, uh, her family had to send her grandmother back to the Philippines. So, like, these are really uncomfortable situations, yes. which I felt that Bernie Sanders in particular was really addressing. He was speaking to these. So yeah. we're, we're talking about health care and how it impacts an individual, a yeah. family, not this large idea that nobody can understand it's you know what this has an impact yeah how we're addressing immigration and some of the immigration concerns that are going on the costs of it and what that real so okay so what i have heard as well uh is and what more people are beginning to pay attention to and you tell me if you agree is we're starting to pay attention to those conversations we're starting to pay attention i hope to real people and their real daily concerns uh, I, I would largely agree with that, um, and, and I think there's some details that are going on with that. One is that a lot of people who care about these issues are getting actively involved with the Democratic Party. Um, and or politics in general. Or, or politics in general. Um, but as, as a result of getting involved, I think that there are more people who are actually speaking to this issue. But then also as a whole, I think that our eyes are definitely opening up to there are these different groups that uh, we, we support in, in theory, but may not necessarily be directly addressing their needs in practice. Right, right exactly. Um, and that's a, I think that's an important point that you're making, again, because that goes back to the idea of, yeah, there are all these great big ideas. Most of us don't have the time yeah. to actually spend <laughs> looking at it. But yeah. as, as more and more as we're seeing, yes, people's eyes are being opened up in a different way. Or, or as I stated last week, the amount of civic engagement at the moment is higher than it has been for generations, perhaps since the Revolutionary War, because the number of people who are saying, or joining one group or another. Yeah. And it has, hasn't been only the Democratic Party. It's been nonpartisan groups. Um, as, w as was mentioned, there's so many of them, yeah. more than can be named across the country, that are actively involved and engaged and are trying to have a voice. Some are just declaring, this is my voice. <laughs> and that's what we need. We need yeah. people to not be shy about that, right? So, but, so that's where you come from. Rec <laughs> seeing all of this stuff and saying, you know what? There are issues that are affecting everyday people. Yeah. And everyday people need to have somebody looking after them. And, that's, yeah. and so that's where you're coming from. So you got engaged. Yeah. You got engaged in the process. I, I've been uh, very engaged in all levels of the process. I ended up going to the county convention last year as well as the state convention. Um, I'm pretty close with some of the national delegates. So just even having that secondhand uh, information and experience of how conventions work and what they even are. It's huge. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it provides a lot of, um, I think, background for for the a lot of setting for what's happening yeah. nationally as well as locally. So that's an, that was an experience. 
you're, you, you yeah. talk about eyes getting open. It's like, okay, it's too much, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it definitely is overwhelming. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there, uh, I think one of the most overwhelming things for me was just I had this large perception that the Democratic Party was this uh, robust, fully functioning party. And let's be clear, the Democratic Party functions on volunteers, and as many people are volunteering, that's as many people as we're going to have the energy. And uh, the areas that I was getting involved in, there were a limited number of volunteers. And as a result of that, um, a as, as a precinct president, I take on a lot more responsibility if I'm the only one involved. Exactly. And that can be discouraging for some people, right? It, it can absolutely be discouraging. I still have conversations where now I have more people involved, both in my precinct and my district, uh, and then it's like the, nec the next step up is, well, how are we going to make that happen? And I think to expect that this is not going to be an uphill climb is, I, I think, is just um, unrealistic. I think the path in terms of creating civic engagement is very straightforward. Um, I think also acknowledging the amount of work that it takes to create that civic engagement is maybe not something we want to acknowledge, but it, it's there. It's a lot of work and requires dedicated people to spend time, volunteer time, yep. perhaps away from family, going out and engaging people that they don't know. Yeah. Right? I, yeah. I, I've seen both in the Bernie campaign as well as uh, within the Democratic Party and even outside of the Democratic Party, people who otherwise would never be going up to random strangers and having pretty awkward conversations about, hey, I'm your neighbor, you've yes. never met me before, yeah. uh, but I'm interested in these things and I'm wondering if you're interested in them too. But it makes a connection then, right? Because at first it's awkward and then you start having a conversation yes. and next thing you know you're realizing that, wait, there's a dialogue here. Yes. That wasn't there yeah. before. No, there, I, I think there uh, just there's a vacuum in terms of the conversation. Um, yeah. And, it, you know, the more you get involved in the conversation, the more you realize everyone has the same problems. As everyone you know. has the same problems. <laughs> and, and the more you have those conversations, the more you realize some thoughts you have, other people also have and agree yeah. with. Or, uh, and, and it helps shape and redefine yeah. your thoughts as well, right? Uh, yes, and I would also point out that many people you thought you agreed with, you might disagree with. Um, you didn't realize, or on one issue or another, or yeah. across the board. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I think that um, the disagreement tends to not be so much, we were discussing this earlier, tends to not be so much about what the end result we would like to happen is usually the same positive situation. Right. Um, but it's the interpretation of the information that we have available yes. and how we get there. And how we get there. And that's, that right there is the divide between the, the, the parties, the yeah. two primary parties at the very least, is yeah. how we get there. Certainly. It's two different approaches, and that's, that's another topic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, okay. Um, all right, so first of all, thank you for your engagement in the process, and thank you for agreeing to jump in and, and have these conversations, as awkward as they can be. As someone who recently uh, ran for um, a state seat, I know how difficult it is to go knock on people's doors and say, hi, yeah. how are you? <laughs> I've only you don't know me, yeah. <laughs> but hey, can we talk about something and, and see what happens from there? But have you found that that ends up becoming an inspiring thing? Um, I, I wouldn't say all of the time, um, <laughs> and not that, that it's uh, a demotivating thing, but I think it just depends on the conversation and the people right. that are engaged. But certainly, I would say, for most of the conversations I've had, um, at the very least, just someone even having someone else to talk to about is is eye-opening, it's, and that, it's a huge, huge that there are benefit, other people so. that are paying attention to exactly, this. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So unfortunately, we have to, already have to take a break. So thank you for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Thanks again to Raphael Leonard for joining us today. See you in one minute. Hi, I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia. I'm the host of Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. It's a program where we discuss the impact of change on workers, employers, and the economy. So join us every other Tuesday from 4 o'clock to 4.30. We're live in the studio on Working Together in Think Tech Hawaii. Take care. See you soon. Bye. 
Aloha, my name is Joe Kent, and I'm the Vice President of Research at the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. The Grassroot Institute is a public policy think tank, and we try to build a better economy in Hawaii, and you can see us on the TV show E Hana Kako on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcasting Network every Monday at 2 o'clock. We'll see you there, and let's build a better Hawaii together. Aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Once again, please welcome our guest, Mr. Rafael Leonard. He's currently precinct president. Correct. And that's for another year? Uh, yes, that is for another year. And then um, I actually don't know when uh, the, I think it's technically the, the precinct elections happen. The precinct um, elections, roughly March-ish, yeah. every two years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Okay, so getting engaged. So okay, what this what we're gonna what this is really it. What we're talking about here is the rebuilding of the grassroots. The Democratic Party was founded primarily, at least, at least going back to the you know, 50s, 60s, and, and and so forth, was founded on grassroots initiatives. People reaching out to people, the volunteers going out and finding out what's going on and how are we engaging and getting people motivated and activated and advocating and that's grassroots so what we need to be doing right now is recognize the opportunity that we have to rebuild that grassroots because of the interest in engagement that we have right now in the process so um, with that in mind yeah there's a lot of different parties the two primary parties we have are democrats and republicans so Raphael. As far as, from your perspective, what is the purpose of the Democratic Party? Where, where is the Democratic Party coming from? What does it mean, I guess, maybe for you? Maybe we should put it that way. Yeah, uh, well, I, would, I think it's interesting because there is history behind this. It, it really, you know, there's what I would like the Democratic Party focus to be and then what the focus has been. Um, and okay, I, tell I, us about that. So, uh, in 2004, there was a shift after uh, the general election, more towards a 50-state plan uh, within okay. the from, and that was that was this top is, down. This is high-level strategy yeah, and yeah. how we are approaching elections. Exactly. Um, and uh, then in 2008, there's a turnover in the chairs, just as a natural way of um, how how the elections and the primaries go, and there is a move away from that focus and a little more focus towards very specific races. Um, and the challenge with focusing on very specific races uh, in terms of election races is that you, you really only, uh, like if you don't go at, if you don't try certain things, then you're not, you have a 100% guarantee that you're not going to win them. Yeah, exactly, and yeah. so that was one of the challenge in terms of work, the Democratic Party was narrowing down the focus on races, elections, and then within that, focusing on very specific elections. And it moved away, not completely, but it moved away from a 50-state plan. Um, and as a result of that, there became less focus on the actual infrastructure of the Democratic Party. Um, so the, each state party has uh, a large number of positions, and, and there's a hierarchy to them, uh, which usually follows uh, the county lines as well as the house district lines, or however the right, the right, party chooses. Right, right. As and you were saying, you go from precinct to district to region to county to state. Yeah, and yeah. there's those levels of hierarchy, and then from there, there's little divisions inside yeah. as well. Yeah, and so the important thing about that is that if you ha if all of those uh, positions are filled up and engaged, which is really much more important, I think, if they're engaged then you have, you have a grassroots that is paying attention to the issues, is paying attention to what the party is doing, and also is living in their community. So there's this... That's how it's supposed to work. Yes. It's supposed to work so that all of, all of the <laughs> precinct people, the presidents, the vice presidents, the treasurers, the secretaries, and all of the other members who are part of that precinct for that party are yep. supposed to be working together to grow, to talk, to communicate, and to then relay that information through the system. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to work. That's how it's supposed to work. And I would also point out that in terms of how it's supposed to work, it, it's also a two-way communication because then there can also be a top-down communication, right. um, which has maybe been more of the focus. But uh, through getting involved, one of the things that I noticed in Hawaii was that there were 
kind of a lot of gaps that I, I would have thought would be filled. I would have thought that uh, the grassroots of the party was more engaged. That was an assumption that I was working on without absolutely any information. It's an assumption we <laughs> all had when we first began. It's like, oh, I'm going to join the Democratic <laughs> Party. I agree with all these principles. That's a wonderful yep. thing. I want to get engaged. Yeah. Who's all these people who are helping? Oh, there's 10 of you, yeah. not 4,000 of you. I, and depending on where you are, <laughs> 10 might be a really high number. <laughs> um, I, I've been lucky to engage people throughout the country. So uh, in different parts of the country, especially in the more uh, what we classify as red states, a lot of times there will be entire regions or counties which might have up to 10 people for the county. And if you think about a county, that's Oahu is a county level. And Oahu has roughly uh, two to 300 involved uh, officials, I guess I would... Active, active party active members. Active party members, thank you. Um, and so if you think about the difference between having 200 active party members for, you know, to engage Oahu citizens versus 10... Especially when you realize that our roles suggest there are 60,000 members? Yes. 60,000 yes. members across the state and there's maybe 300 that are... Yeah. That, that maybe are active, probably fewer than that, who are actually active yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah, uh, active so. is, is, I think, a loose term. It <laughs> depends on. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Uh, so yeah, we have a con there's a convention coming up. We have a convention coming up on April 22nd. And, and that's where all of the delegates, you have to become a delegate. Each district gets 24 delegates. And you go to the convention, and that's where you work on things. You work on the rules. You work on the platform. You work on the caucuses and, and what you're going to be doing and how you're going to be doing it and how you want to proceed the next two years. Um, as far as the county perspective is concerned, is what we have in, uh, coming up next year. There'll be another state one, and, and the, that's a, a ne the next step of that. Um, but that's that's where the work gets done, and that's where. So a lot of people will show up. We'll get 300 people, 350 people who show up to the convention. But then, after that, not all of those people stay engaged, right? Yes. Um, but that's, and that's your job. Well, to it, keep them engaged. Yes, right? that's one of my goals is to help promote that, and that that goes for trying to help other people as well as trying to educate and help myself. I'm still learning about what are the most effective ways that I can be involved and yeah. utilize my time because I do also have a job and limited amount of time. Um, but yeah, I think that in terms of so. If you have 200, let's say, actively engaged members of the Democratic Party, that's a great starting place because mm -hmm. what you can do with that is you can contact other Democratic Party members and inform them about the different opportunities that they can have coming up. Mm -hmm. And really, in an, in an ideal situation, a precinct is a small section of a district, depending on where it is. And ideally, an active precinct is engaging uh, their their neighbors their neighbors their community and yeah. and because that's again that's the point of it that that is the entire so if point. you if you've got so I, I know that there are some precincts that have no officials in them at the moment correct and other precincts where they're full yep um, and there we, we need more people in all precincts so okay the different ways of communicating some of the challenges that we have in communicating with people is not everybody has email not everybody even has a phone all the time, or we don't have their phone number at the very least, or the email and phone numbers that we have have changed. Yep. So how are we getting to people? So what, from your perspective as a precinct president, really, what are the different techniques you're using to reach more people? Uh, I think the most important place to start is what are people interested in. Um, what, what are the issues that are, they're interested in? What are their concerns perhaps uh, with the party? How, not necessarily how do they want to get involved, but what are the things that they're talking about? So I think that's really important. Right, but um, how do you reach them? Yeah, well, so uh, what I've been doing is I've been having semi-irregular meetings, um, which for some precincts, uh, they, they go above that, and for many precincts, just because there's almost no one involved, it doesn't really make sense to have one person show up to their precinct right. meeting. Um, but so uh, one is by 
reaching out to them. I have a small email list just of people that indicated they were interested in being active. Uh, another way is also the Democratic Party has access to all of its current members that um, are signed up with the party. Uh, so you can reach out to them that way. Uh, you can do emails. Um, and I, I'm mentioning these things because they sound pretty simple and straightforward, but uh, the more I get involved, the more I realize that even these relatively simple things don't happen. And uh, I actually went to, so Oahu's divided up into regions. I went to the Region 5 meeting last night, and um, I forget the gentleman's name, but he was basically mentioning some pretty straightforward things like, do you have food, and do you have a regular meeting time? <laughs> right. Um, and so I think in terms of just getting people to show up and get engaged, and the other thing he was mentioning was to, you need to have substance to your meeting. Like, if, if I call a meeting just to talk with other people about things, that, that's not an effective use of their time, and it's demotivating. Right. So pick an issue. We're going to all get together and talk about this issue, and then what we're going to do. What's the yeah. action that we are then going to take? Yeah. So that's what we actually would hope is happening on that community level, that precinct level, is let's get together and talk about healthcare in Hawaii and how that yeah. is impacting our community. And let's learn from that and then take that out to the people. Yeah. Whether it's phone calls, whether it's knocking on their doors, uh, whether it's calling for other community meetings, whether it's going to neighborhood boards and trying to say, hey, here's the topic, here's the discussion that's happening. And this month, we're trying to communicate with our community on this issue to get feedback. Yeah. Right, and that's what that's that's what can be done. That yeah. isn't what is being done most of the time, though. For right? the most part, it's not currently yeah. happening. Yeah. But uh, is that is that is that what you're trying to build? That yeah, I mean, my end goal for uh, so the precinct I work with is in Kailua, and my end goal is really to create an active uh, group of grassroots individuals who, not necessarily even entirely just party focused, but who are engaged in our state legislature legislature who are showing up to neighborhood board meetings. I just went to my first neighborhood board meeting. There are some pretty interesting things happen there. Interesting things, and yet you also realize the number of people, number of community members who actually show up to that. Yeah. I'm on my neighborhood board, and this last Monday we went, and I think from the community itself, there was a handful of people, yeah. maybe, maybe as many as 10. Mm -hmm. The number of officials that are neighborhood board members, the legislators, the legislators' representatives, yep. uh, the, the um, uh, uh, board of water supply, and you go through the whole list of people who are there as an official, Yeah, they outnumber the actual community members. Yeah. And that's one of the issues that we have. So yes, that's one way. And so unfortunately, we're already at the end of our show. Doesn't that happen yeah. quickly, right? Yeah. So this whole thing is about rebuilding the grassroots. And I don't care, honestly, if you're Democrat, Republican, if you think you're a Democrat or Republican, if you don't care about parties, if they just make you mad. Where we are right now is a point where we must be engaged. We must find a way to be engaged. We must make sure that the conversations are being had about what's impacting you in your daily life and what can we do to make it better as a society. And that's where we are. So thank you for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, Politics in Hawaii. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Uh, thanks again to Raphael Leonard for joining us today. Thanks to the staff and the crew here at Think Tech Hawaii. Everybody's wonderful here. Remember, rebuild the grassroots. See you next time.